Hello. Welcome back to the Sunday Serving Channel, where you come every week for hope and truth and inspiration from the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's so much hope there. There's so many words that are just right for every day. And, uh, you know, we're coming up to the Easter time of the year. Easter is about a month away. And before we go into some of the stories of Easter from the gospel, let's find something that points to the, the purpose or the reason of Easter. There's so many stories in the gospel that Jesus taught us why he came, to bring hope, to bring forgiveness, to bring new life to people. I love the gospels where Jesus taught in parables. So how about a parable today? Never get tired of parables. There's, a, there's a, in the Gospel of Luke, there's some wonderful parables told. Luke chapter 15. I want to read two parables today. The first is the parable of the lost sheep. So here we're, we're in a, by a goat pen here. There's no, there's no sheep in this pen. But I guess goats also get lost sometimes. So it goes like this. Now, the tax collectors and sinners we're all gathering around to hear Jesus. I love that how pretty much every time Jesus was teaching, who's he with? Normal people, tax collectors, sinners, people that, uh, working class people, people that weren't necessarily living good lives, people that needed Jesus. And there's always this theme of someone being envious. You know, Jesus, I think you should be with, with better people. It tended to be the Pharisees. It says, but the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, he just, I love the way you can picture that. They muttered. They were, they were grumbling about this. This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Now this time Jesus didn't speak to their, to their envy and their hypocrisy. He told a story. He told a parable. He told them this. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it. And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and, and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. So he's telling that story, you know, in terms that people can understand. There were a lot more people living off the land, farming, raising flocks of sheep and goats maybe camels, and those are valuable things. Every animal is worth something. So here's, he's telling a story of a sheep, a shepherd, a sheep farmer, who loses one sheep out of a hundred, leaves, leaves the 99, he's so concerned about that one lost sheep, leaves the rest of the flock in open country, so they were still in danger, and goes searching for that one lost sheep. When he finds it, he is so happy he rejoices that he um, calls all his friends and neighbors and celebrates. So we can, we can get that picture, but, but Jesus goes on and, and says why this is important. This is what's key here. He says, I tell you that in the same way there will be more, more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Now think about that for a moment. Isn't that amazing? Jesus says, in heaven, in heaven where God rules supreme, where the angels are around the throne of God, where everything is right, in heaven, there is more rejoicing over one messed up person, sinner, someone bad, who changes, who repents, who wants to find new life in the truth. There's more joy over that than in people, in 99 people doing everything just right, doing good things. Isn't that amazing? And, and that theme comes over and over again, that God, that Jesus, that the angels rejoice. They rejoice over repentance, rejoice over sinners changing their way. Look at this little goat here. Luckily it's not lost, but even if it was lost and, and it was found, when we're lost, there is more rejoicing in heaven. And this next parable it's not about goats or sheep or horses or cows, but 
similar story. So Jesus, in case you didn't connect with that farming parable, then, then check this one out. Or suppose a woman has ten silver coins. So now, now this takes us to Wall Street, I guess, right? Someone has ten silver coins. So those would have been very valuable, like uh, thousands of dollars worth of stock or something, right? And loses one. Doesn't she light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls, again, same story. When she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost coin. So same story. Looking for the one lost item, in this case it's a coin, something valuable, before it was a lost sheep. And when you find it, there will be such rejoicing. You'll, you'll have a big party. You'll call your friends and neighbors and pull out the stops and, and have a party and celebrate this found item, whether it's a coin or a sheep or us. And, and then Jesus always tells the point of it. So he, again, he, he now translates this parable and says, in the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Same thing, except this is a little different here. This is, this is actually fascinating. Listen to this. There is rejoicing in the presence of, the, of God. So who's rejoicing there? It's not just the angels. Here it says God. God is rejoicing in the presence of the angels over one sinner. So if one sinner repenting brings such joy to God the Creator, the Creator who made everything, who could, who could make nations and and worlds and, and universes, one sinner, God rejoices, the angels rejoice. How much more should we rejoice when one person finds hope, when one little situation in anyone's life is turned around? You know, there's so much evil in the world, there's so much suffering, you think of the war in Ukraine, but one situation where there's a little hope, where someone changes, God rejoices, so we should rejoice too. So those parables are so hopeful. That is really pointing to the purpose of Easter. Why did God send Jesus to this world? Why did Jesus have to suffer and be crucified, die, and then rise to life, the resurrection? That was for one sinner. That was for every person who changes. And what God and Jesus and the angels are rejoicing with or in is us people now, today, who find hope, who can change our lives, who can come out of bad situations, just like those lost sheep that were found or the coin that was found. So God bless you all. Have hope. Go search for that lost coin. Rejoice if you are the lost coin. Jesus is the cause of hope. Easter is coming. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.